What was your finest moment of revenge? Girlfriend's brother sprayed water on my face so I told him to try these barbecue peanuts, which were actually the world's hottest peanuts, as he dances around a few seconds I hand him a nice cold water bottle, full of Everclear. I posted this somewhere else a long time ago, but here it goes. I was in the navy, I was in basic enlisted submarine school with shared barrack rooms. I had two roommates who for a lack of a better term, sucked, they were dirty, they never cleaned and they just smelled bad all the time, oh, and also they never woke up on time for anything. Every week during room inspections we failed, terribly. I ended up getting so annoyed with them because we started to get into a lot of trouble that I plotted the revenge to show the inspectors that it wasn't me and it was my two soil sack roommates. Every 4 or so days everyone stood duty. One week night I had duty and I waited for the exact time that I was a roving watchstander in the barracks to pull off the trickery. I pee in a ziplock baggie and placed it in my friend's freezer prior to my watch and there I had it. A sheet of pee ice. I walked up to my room 60 minutes before inspection, knowing my fucked roommates wouldn't be up, and slid this sheet of pee ice under the door into the middle of the room. And you may ask why I didn't just open the door as it was my room, because I didn't want to take the chance of waking one of them up during my covert operation. The inspectors came around and sure enough, oops, I forgot to wake up for my roommates like I did everyone else on the floor, amidst the melee of the inspector banging on the door, them trying to get dressed and them both very confused and shuffling through the pee, all heck broke loose. The inspector had those shit fucks standing at attention leaning over to smell the huge puddle realizing it was pee in the middle of the floor. The face he made when he made that realization was something I will never forget. He lost it. Those two got in a ton of trouble and since I was on watch they lifted all punishment on me finally realizing it was them the whole time. I don't feel guilty at all. I never did. I never will. TL. DR. Roommates were dirty. I made them dirtier with frozen pee. In 8th grade I was hanging with two of my friends at the local HS. We had just finished playing a pickup game of football. As we were walking to the bathrooms I saw, what I thought was, a friend and said hey man what's up we had played Pop Warner together for years so I knew him. He came out acting really tough and strange. Then about 7 other black dudes came out with him. I guess he joined a gang over the summer. Anyway they proceeded to jump me and beat the crap out of me while the friends I was with just stood there and watched I am not friends with them anymore lol. It was a long bloody walk home I never forgot about it. Anyway football season came around and look who is on my team. We get paired together in a drill where one person holds the football and another person tackles. Both PPL laying flat on their back. A coach blew the whistle and I never ran so hard in my life. I trucked the crap out of him to the point I cracked his helmet and he cried like a little girl. I stood over him and said where's your gang now? He showed me mad respect after that never said a word to me. To this day I still think about how awesome it felt. Very petty, but a major victory for me. In elementary school, first 7th grade where I live, I was bullied by this girl. I was tiny, red haired, braces and glasses, with low self esteem, of course I was a target. She was just fat and entitled. She gave me numerous concussions and loose teeth and some emotional scars which made me apply for a secondary school in another district. My parents were a bit surprised when they got the letter about my being admitted. But that's another story. I went on to be accepted in one of the more prestigious public high schools in my area again. I have no idea how this works outside Norway. Met her one day at the end of the second year. She had put on so much weight and was on her way home. Four takeaway bags in hand. To her parents place. I lived on my own. And was out jogging. At my skinniest. That day. My revenge was being nice to her. She had failed everything. And could only get into the lowest priority high school. I was in the highest priority. She had gained so much weight. And I was skinny and felt beautiful. She bought kilos of takeaway. And I was out running. And I was so nice and compassionate. All those years of bullying. I just felt sorry for her. Back in the summer of 09 me and my girlfriend were going pretty strong. Anyway I found out she was fricking this guy on the side. She admitted it and said she was sorry and I dumped her. Anyway I didn't know the guy but it remembered his name. One night at a party a few months later I got introduced to a guy I thought was him. I slyly worked out it was him. 
I'm not a guy to hold a grudge generally but this was something else. I didn't want to do anything to him but when I walked into a bedroom to take a phone call and there he was passed out drunk on the bed. I didn't know what to do but I knew I had to good an opportunity to pass it up. I was pretty drunk at the time but the first thing I thought of was to take a dump on him. I passed it off as a stupid idea but I couldn't think of anything else so I went with it. So I went with it. I left the party just after and I haven't seen or heard from him since. Not a day goes by I don't think about it. Needless to say I haven't told anyone about this in real life. I'm not sure but his say vengeance was a dish best served crappy. An eye for an eye. A dump for a dump. My senior year in college my housemate went from being my best friend to a cold hearted butthole who was mean to my dog. So I peed in his mouthwash was mean to your dog. I'll allow it. There was a teacher that I hated in middle school and he hated me just as much. One day I noticed that one of the magazines in our classroom had his address on it. I wrote it down and waited until summer vacation, so it would be less suspicious. I went to Borders and got a bunch of magazine subscription inserts and had a close friend who went to another school fill them out with his information. I checked the bill me later and sent them out. When I got back to school the next year, I could tell he suspected me but couldn't prove it and I was happy because I didn't have any classes with him anymore. Ah, the classic sign your enemies up for magazine subscriptions revenge. A friend of mine had been seriously third wheeling me with a certain girl that I was into. I asked why and he said it was fair game. May the best man win so I decided to find him another suitable partner. I went on to Omegle typed gay into preferences. Met a slew of lovely middle aged men who wanted my kick and thus gave them his. He received pictures of asses. Dongs and 44 year old men wanting to let daddy see you. In my eyes justice was served finally. No ragrats. I was once staying at a friend's house in the 7th grade. His older sister thought it would be a good idea to embarrass him in front of me by cracking an egg over his head from the top of the balcony when we got home from school. My friend was infuriated and woke me up at 5am the next morning, went into the kitchen and started whisking a bowl of eggs. 5 minutes and 5 eggs later we went downstairs to his sister's room where he poured the whole bowl of whisked egg onto her face. The look of horror as she woke up with her face covered in egg was probably one of the funnest things I have seen in my entire life. To this day she has never fricked with him again. In 4th grade gym I discovered heartbreak, revenge, and victory all in one class period. Moments before class had started my boyfriend dumped me because I was too weird. There I sat in disbelief and sadness, and he just ran around like nothing had happened. We were put on opposite teams, only making the chasm between us greater. Now, I am possibly the worst person at sports, wiffleball being no exception. I stepped up to the orange rubber plate, the bat heavy in my hands. The ex was pitching and called out to everyone in the outfield. Don't worry about this one. She can't hit anything. I was embarrassed. I was heartbroken. Mostly, I was pee. I said nothing, watching as he casually cocked back his arm. His eyes gleamed as the ball flew from his grip, careening towards me. I raised my bat and swung with all of my measly strength. The wiffle ball met my bat with a dull, plastic whack. Next, the wiffle ball met the X's balls, square on. I watched as he crumpled to the floor, a wailing heap. My team cheered for me as I ran around the bases, greeting me with high fives as I cleared home. It was beautiful. I was in the locker room in high school gym class, hiding in the back because I had to call my mother about something ASAP. Just as I'm listening to the recording, this kid who had been a long time bully to me came over and started taunting me with his usual threats. As I was leaving the message, in which I did not want him taunting me in the background, I kicked him as hard as I could. I aimed for his stomach, but he reacted and somehow managed to get himself kicked in the balls instead. He looked at me in shock and amusement and ran away. I managed to finish the message without faltering once. Not long after this I happened to be at the DMV with the same kid and both of our fathers, both of us testing to get our permits. I passed. He failed. Extra karma. B. My friend Roman had just bought a brand new shiny bike. We were taking it for a spin around the neighborhood and stopped off at my woman's house. We left the bikes on her big porch and went inside. Not 5 minutes later we went outside and my friend's new bike was missing. 
We promptly hop in my car and start to search Eugene for the bike. After about an hour we were giving up and thought we'd better check the central bus station one last time. Sure enough there was 16 year, roughly, with my friend's bike and stickers already removed. We pulled over and confronted him. He said he found the bike in a ditch and promptly handed it back. I was putting the bike in the car while my friend fumed and looked up this kid up and down. Right as we're about to head out he yells give me freaking jacket he made the kid give him the jacket he was wearing as punishment for stealing the bike. We ended up finding lipstick, a camera with some unusual selfies, and other random things in the pockets. It was a nice rugged car hard jacket. To this day my friend still uses it. Freaking Eugene. The bully who played a large part in my anorexia asking me out in college not realizing who I was. I shot him down hard and told him how he affected me. He scoffed it off but looked really sad every time he saw me. I got in a fight with one of my friends when I was about 12 or so. We were in a heated argument and I decided enough is enough so I picked up some seaweed with a stick from the nearby creek and threw that crap on her head. Oh sweet justice. I give your comment 10 stroke 10 on the Satan scale. The chainsmoker who lives above me tosses his cigarette butts on my back patio. I asked him not to and he just ignored me. So every Friday when he has a party, I call in a noise complaint. Could possibly get a bowl or something to collect the ones he flicks on your patio. When enough has accumulated, knock on his door with the bowl of butts. And when he answers, proceed to throw them in his face. I have a more direct approach on things. I was bullied a lot in middle school because, you know, middle school. I was a quiet, unassuming, itty bitty girl who got along well with the teachers and always did my homework answered questions blah blah blah. One day in class, this kid is being a dong and throwing his stuff at me, whatever, the usual. But when the teacher is turned away, I whip an eraser, one of his that he had thrown at this kid's face and hit him right in the middle of his freaking forehead. He's stunned for a second and then tries to get me in trouble. B can't do crap because uh, it is his eraser and two. No one believed that I would do something like that. Made my day. It won't sound that great, but it was great to me. I was dating and living with this guy, only for about 6 months, but in that time he cheated on me repeatedly. I know, shouldn't have stayed, manipulated me tried to control me, had me paying for everything, had a job for only a brief 2 months, and in the end started hitting me. Oddly enough, he broke up with me, so I got an apartment of my own and got all my crap out, another ordeal. A few months later, I'm much happier and relieved to have gotten away from that experience. Me and my friend are watching a movie at about 2 in the morning when there's a knock on the door. I go to answer it, and fuckface is there. He's crying and his pupils are huge and he's acting weird. I asked him if he was tripping, and he said he'd eaten a lot of shrooms. Then he said he just needed to talk to me. It was winter, it was raining outside, and it couldn't have been better. I just slammed the door in his face, dead bolted it, and went back upstairs and had a good laugh with my friend. It just felt good to do that. It felt like some sort of revenge to me. It was satisfying to say the least. Not revenge so much as karma. Jackass cuts me off and throws a bird while I am on my way to work. 45 minutes later said Jackass rolls into the air in full spinal protections after rolling his car. Did I mention I am a nurse and was floating in the air? He remembered me. In 6th grade I was bullied by basically my entire class. We had homerooms that would travel around together all day. There was one particular kid who was especially nasty. He was the athletic jock type and caused some emotional scarring because I had never been made fun of before 6th grade. Fast forward to high school when the school had a dodgeball tournament. A lot of the teams dressed up in uniforms and my team decided our uniform would be dresses. I'm a male. This jocks team was our first match. We proceeded to annihilate them. Me getting out 5 of the 6 people on the team, including the ass jock. While I was wearing a low cut dress. Hot. I was at a house party with some friends in like. 2009 I guess. I don't quite remember. I was hammered. People were taking turns on the pong table. Like you do. And this super trashy looking. Crap faced broad comes in and demands that we start playing flip cup. Which is the most idiotic game of all time. 
Nobody paid any attention to her demand so she went around in a circle and pointed right in the face of everyone at the table in turn saying you're a P, you're a P, you're a P, and you're a P. We later learned that this chick had done her first porno that week and thought she was hot crap, had been acting like a prima donna for days. Anyhow, my friend was playing Pong at the time, and he's a nice fella, so he says something to the tune of there's a few people waiting for Pong still. Can you wait like 15, 20 minutes? She slaps him in the face. He yells what the frick is wrong with you she is streaming curses at him, and goes to get her boyfriend. One of the guys on the table pulls me and my friend outside and tells us to just chill for a few minutes, that this girl's boyfriend is jacked, a cokehead. He lives here and he'll probably beat the crap out of us throw us out of the party. So while we're cooling off I see my opportunity. I climb into the empty kitchen and pee into the half full gallon jug of orange juice on the table. Then climb back out the window. What happens next? This bee walks into the kitchen with her boyfriend who is fuming. Pours herself a screwdriver. Downs it. Me and my buddy took to an open 12 packs of beer from the patio and bailed. Going to need a video link to confirm that she was actually in a porno. Probably won't get read, but here goes. In middle school I was kind of the ugly duckling. I had teeth too big and my smile was awful. No boobs. Didn't know how to dress. Horrible haircuts. No idea how to put makeup on. I also had a huge crush on this kid. Let's call him Mike. So Mike from 6th to 8th grade, wouldn't give me the time of day, made fun of me behind my back, laughed in my face, but awkward me still wanted to date him, got sent to summer school in between 8th and 9th grade where I proceeded to make friends with one of the more popular kids in my soon to be high school, over the summer I grew into my teeth, got boobs, new clothes and learned makeup, started freshman year looking like a different person mike saw me and ended up cornering me in the hallway where we had a conversation where he started telling me how good i looked and asked me out because of the confidence of being friends with some of the cool kids i laughed in his face told him he had his chance and lost it that was his own fault and i walked away smiling to this day 17 years later that's all one of my favorite memories of high school. Being able to turn down my crush because I was hot and he had missed out. Revenge is sweet. Last year the kid who sat behind me in math copied my answers for the last three test. I told him to stop when I found out and he lashed out on me. So, during the exam I caught him taking my answers. So I started to put the wrong answers. At the end he handed it in and while walking back to his seat I erased every answer I put in and looked him dead in the eye while doing it. Not me but my good friend got married to a guy that she met online. He was originally from the town we lived in but he was stationed at a naval base in Washington state at the time. She found out that he cheated on her and she went freaking insane. She hopped in her car and drove from Iowa to Washington straight through. When she arrived in town she was even more crazed and high on caffeine and she went to his house and drove straight through his garage door. He was at work at the time and by the time he got home she had systematically destroyed every single thing he owned. Right down to taking every single CD out of its case and breaking it in half. She also used a can of spray paint to write cheater on every surface. The level of damage was outrageous. There really wasn't anything salvageable. Best part, those suckers are still married. Nuts. Not my personal revenge, but the older brother of a good friend of mine. He was a freshman in college, and was in band on drumline. On a long bus ride, the upperclassmen all decided to lock him in the bus bathroom, they had peed everywhere and it was horribly disgusting. So, the next time they all took a trip, he made cookies but put laxatives in them and gave them out to all the upperclassmen. Needless to say, he was never fricked with again. Many years ago, I had this co-worker who was the supervisor's nephew. He was a young guy, 18 or 19, and a complete punk. I was in charge of the department. We were in. I'd always have some issue with this kid but his uncle would never handle it. He'd be on his cell phone texting his girl of the week or would come and drunk. Could never get him to meet the nightly quota without some difficulty. The last straw for me happened when he got my phone number and gave to it to several girls he knew. I'd get texts from some of these girls, which made it awkward to explain to my girlfriend at that time. Eventually I figured the kid's routine for which days he would likely come to work drunk. 
I knew what truck he drove and the route he come to work by. So I told an old high school friend about her encountering this drunk driver, on a regular basis, going to work. This friend of mine was on the local police force at that time and said he'd check into it. The next week, the kid misses the second day of work. He was marked as a no call, no show, naturally. His uncle dismissed it. Then he missed the next day and his uncle comes over to my department and tells me that he going to send someone to help me the rest of the week. I asked what had happened. The supervisor says that his nephew was stopped by the police yesterday and he was driving drunk. Then they found some drugs in his truck and arrested him. My supervisor ends by asking which toolbox was his nephew's, meaning that he likely lost his job. Sure enough, the following week the supervisor comes to my debt and empties his nephew's toolbox. The kid was still serving time for the drug possession last time I heard. <laughs> Neighbor of mine. Brian was a total butthole. I was two years older than him, and he acted half his age. He pee on our deck, threw rocks at my dogs and friends and was a terrible example for my younger brother. Little crap must have been seeking asylum from his addict mother who beat him and her other crack babies. Anyway, it's my sister's 18th birthday. Her and her friends are hanging out in the living room. Brian is in the basement, pestering me, knowing I don't like him. I'm minding my own business, trying to play N64. He keeps smacking the back of my head. Fourth time I told him to knock it off before I hit him back. Challenge accepted. Apparently, he grabs a plastic bat and cracks me in the back of the head. Game over. Brian. I grab the bat, grab him by the throat, and beat the crap out of him. His face is bleeding everywhere. Then I threw the bat aside and worked the torso, throwing him on the ground, stepping on his hands and arms. Soon, I need to pause and regain my energy. He runs up the stairs, full of tears and blood and runs home. I go back to playing N64. My mom sees him. My sister and her friends see him. My brother saw it all and is bawling. My mom's boss, my first future boss, sees this kid who got the crap beat out of him run out of the house. My mom comes downstairs to ask what I did. I looked at her and yelled I hit him. I hit him and didn't stop until I couldn't hit him anymore she told me to wait in the basement. I did. Frick it. Brian told his mom that my sister got her friends to beat him up and throw him against the coffee table. Brian's mom, fat ass comes up to our front door, in panties, a tank top and a baby on her hip, saying she's gonna beat somebody's butt. My mom tells her to get off our property but she won't budge. Three 18 year old men tell her to leave, my mom's boss tells her to leave and my dad, just getting home, says get the frick away from my family. Fat S asks who beat Brian, I walk right up to her and said I did, and he'll do it again if he walks into this house again, then he'll kick your butt. Fat S storms off to beat Brian for lying to her, I won, earned the respect of my sister's friends, proved to Brian that I was a force to be reckoned with and made a lasting impression on my future employer. Got grounded for 4 days. Brian and his freaked up family moved away afterwards. Brian, if you're reading this, I dare you to talk to me in person. Ill freaking blind you. Easy there, wallflower. My ex said she'd call the cops on me for confronting her repeatedly about having stolen and rehoming my cat. So I went home and called the cops on her. Found out what she did with my cat after that. When I was a kid I had acne. My dad was very misinformed and didn't really want to inform himself. He was one of those people who just figured anyone who had acne was just dirty and that things like chocolate and pizza would cause acne. He would make comments when he saw me eating things etc. Saying that that's why I had acne. He didn't really realize they were hurtful. This is all despite the fact that he was paying for me to see a dermatologist and get prescription medication so he knew damned well I was doing what I could to get rid of it. Well, one night he got on my case about eating some chocolate. I got after him and told him he didn't have any idea what he was talking about and that if he wanted to open his mouth then maybe he should do some research. My mom backed me up. Well, the next morning I was up eating breakfast. I had poured some milk and right before drinking it realized that it was bad to the point of being chunky. I just set it aside with the intent of dumping it out after I finished eating. Well, 
he came downstairs and made some smartest comment, not being mean, just trying to be funny, and grabbed my milk without asking. I just had this flashback memory to the night before and rather than stopping him I kept my mouth shut. He ended up dry heaving into the sink and then I told him that next time he should be nicer and I would have warned him. I was laughing pretty hard. We actually get along pretty well. This was just a blind spot that he had. Did I feel bad? Not really. Even if it wasn't intentional he was being pretty hurtful. That being said, to this day I can't drink any milk until I've smelled it several times so I think I've been punished. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.